All right, guys, hi, we're back with more day two of the Monster Energy South by Southwest Dota 2 Invitational. I'm glad so many of you have joined us here at the live event, and of course, welcome back to you guys at home on the stream. We've got an excellent matchup for you. Moving on in the winner's bracket, we've got Team EG versus Cloud9, and I'm joined by EE -E and Arteezy, who uh, I guess are longtime friends. You guys have a, an existing relationship? Yeah, we're good friends. We thought friendship's gone. Your friendship's gone? It's been gone two weeks ago. He picked Terrorblade. Well, you guys used to play together, and I know also Demon and Fear used to play together. So what is it like kind of playing with these existing family ties, if you will? I mean, you can learn a lot from veteran players, so it's actually great to play with them. As personal, I don't know. It's just really great to play with them. I have nothing to add. Does it help you kind of knowing a little bit about the tendencies and strategies of the people you're about to play? Uh, yeah, but it's also, when you play with new players like Demon, sometimes the surprises helps you as well, so. Definitely. Well, you guys are in the winner bracket, so you've got a lot of momentum. You haven't lost yet. What does it mean to stay in that winner bracket as opposed to letting a loss bring you down to the loser bracket? Basically means we control this tournament. All right, all right. You know, I've been told that if it comes to Jedi and Padawan, you were the master and Arteezy was the apprentice. But I've also been told Arteezy would say that the apprentice has finally surpassed the master. Do you have a response to that? Have you watched his Drow Ranger? I, I can't say I'm too familiar with it. Um, 13 Dragon Tales. Yeah? What do you think, Arteezy? I'm a better than master, man. I surpassed him. What, do you have any response to his comments about, um, you know? Yeah, your it's a bad game, it happens, you know? You feed there, you feed here, it's whatever. All right, guys. Well, I guess we can take it out on the court or on the map, as it were. Is there, are there any final remarks you want to say to your audience, your fans, EG in general, anything? 2-0. <laughs> what about you? I'm wearing my scarf, and I want MOG with this, so I'm just saying we're going to win. All right. Go ahead and shake hands if you're willing. Good game. Good luck. Back to you, casters. A little bit of uh, friendly trash talk. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, of course, the mark of two true competitors at any given point. But let's be real here. This is the match I think everyone outside, us as casters, pretty much everyone involved in this event has been looking forward to. We knew these two teams were going to match up, in all likelihood anyway, and barring any big upsets, the upper bracket finals, a chance at the grand finals on the way, and the two favorite teams now squaring off with, as Anna said, all of these existing family ties. As we move towards this match now, Fog, who do you think has the edge just off the top of your head? Well, EG does have their full roster, so you have to give them the edge right away. Right. But C9 hasn't played together for a lot longer, so right. it's a bit of an even matchup, i got to say. Dyer it's it's going to be some back. great games ahead of us, and I'm just so excited to see this the rivalry between these two teams. It's going to be amazing, and I know that they have a <laughs> lot of fans out there for both sides, so oh, yeah. you I'm really excited to hear this crowd. You've got to remember, too, Demon All-Star stand-in, man. We yep. saw what he was able to do at the D2L Season 4 Demon Grand Finals when... Uh, he rung in and uh, yeah, actually helped carry uh, carry Fnatic to a much better uh, much better uh, performance than I think anyone yeah. expected in that given situation. And you know, him and him and Curtis, of course, you can't really say oh, that AUI yeah. didn't do anything. He played oh, spectacular man. with Fnatic Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. And yeah, speaking of AUI, I mean. He uh, was a standout performer yesterday. And, you know, we yeah. saw some really nice play out of Sing Sing and, um, you know, across the board for Cloud9 in their win yesterday. But really, as we saw that series conclude, you and I were staring at the screen and looking back and doing our final recaps. And it came down to both of us just kind of saying, you know what, across all three games as a body of work, AUI Five was the most valuable remain. player for Cloud9 yesterday. Yeah, Demon had some spectacular games as well. He yeah. played, he's been playing really good at standing in for this team, but. The combination between Aoi and Palai Dai is just so fantastic. The way these two players sync together and the way that they can just really control a game with just these two guys, plus, of course, the rest of their players, it's yep. just it's fantastic to watch. It's just a great sight to see. Absolutely. And the draft just now getting underway. We're still in the first band phase, so yet to see. Yep, we will see the Bad Rider band down here, but uh, we'll be getting into our... Uh, the heart of the picks coming forward. You know, one emergent storyline was, of course, the fact that Fear was having some health problems. I mean, when you talk about any team that has him on it, he is such an unbelievable source of knowledge and experience. And, Absolutely. And an excellent player even aside from that. And, you know, so often, whenever you talk about these players that have been established and have been around so long, you start to focus more on what they bring in terms of the intangibles like that. But Fear, to this day, is still one of the best players you're ever going to see handle the yep. mouse. And, uh, yeah, his busted wing hasn't turned out to be too Five much of a, of a hindrance to EG. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yesterday he didn't really, we didn't really have to see him like go crazy and just carry the yeah. whole game away. But he got his farm up. His team made so much space for him, and then he had the farm in order to just bring this lead out. And now going right into this trap, we have a Doom and a Crystal Maiden picked up right away by Evil Geniuses, and we have. Assuming it's going to be <laughs> Sing Sing's Ember Spirit, which he played absolutely phenomenal yesterday. Oh yeah, I'm talking about the way just his reaction timings were insane. Almost by himself, completely negated uh, bad rider picks because of how quick he was with Searing Chains. Yeah. Uh, functioned very well as an initiator, a ganker. We saw him play in mid. And yeah, it's exciting to see Sing Sing get his hand back on that. Of course, the Doom pickup can complicate remaining. things a bit for an Ember Spirit in terms of what he can bring to bear, depending on how you want to play him. He can be played remaining. as one, can be played mid. Doom counters that, but you know, it's kind of the old joke. Doom counters everything. That's He's why it's never time. a bad idea to pick him first. Yeah, absolutely. And we see the AA picked up by Cloud9, which Dire is pretty standard. Bang. We see them, these guys really enjoy this hero, and they really like their Ember Spirit as well with it. But something I did want to point out too, the ban of the Naga Siren. Yep. Of course we're going to see this, because both these two players, we know Envy absolutely loves it. Mm -hmm. But they banned it, so they don't have to deal with Arteezy's Naga Siren. Because you know what? That hero is actually Ten just such a nuisance remaining. in so many of these games. It just prolongs the game, and then it ends up just being a far more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, Arteezy, a fan favorite in and of his own right, he performed extremely well in EG's first appearance yesterday. And, uh, you know, he's just one of those guys you're going to expect to be an intangible factor on the map. You know, he's Absolutely. not a known variable. You, he, he just has that special something that allows him to, you know, and Sing Sing has it too, but when you talk about the way they both play, Sing Sing usually tends to, to run with the flow of the game, whereas Arteezy is much more of a high-risk, high-reward player in a lot of cases. And that's going to be an interesting matchup to see. And really what I think is going to dictate the flow of the early game and the mid game in a lot of ways. Which hero, which player is able to get the best of that mid lane? Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to be seeing, it's going to be a great battle between these two players mid because it's going to be a lot of bottle crowing, it's going to be a lot of spamming and spells, and it's going to be really up to the supports rotating unless we see some bizarre solo kill happening. So it's going to be, it's going to be really interesting seeing the way the, the two teams rotate and how they're going to do the ganks. So. And uh, talking about other standout players from yesterday as we wait for the second ban phase to get uh, get under our belt, Zai played excellent Dyer for EG. We bang. saw him just kind of sneak up and gradually as a support crack his way into top three, top four in terms of overall net worth a number of times. We will see the Bane banned out by Cloud9. And uh, with the Bane banned out, that was one of the heroes we saw Zai play extremely well. Yeah, I mean, Zai, I mean, I was PPD, actually. Was oh, yes, you're right. right. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't really have that much of an influence on the game, but Five yeah, the, the hero overall is extremely powerful. Like, of course, he's got these two, this disable, this sleep alone is a great disable. Then he has a high burst brain sap, which is pure damage, which also heals him, so it makes him a lot stronger. And then Fiend's Grip, of course, is just a five-second lockdown, which goes through BKB, which is an incredibly powerful spell. And we see Cloud9 actually banning out the Dazzle as well, which we've been seeing it, EG in a lot of the online tournaments. They really, really like this Dazzle. Oh, yeah. And Dazzle, just one of those heroes, and we've talked about it extensively. I mean, he fits into so much you want to do. You can run him. He can be even effective in an, in an aggressive tri lane. He's yep. certainly a good roaming support. It's so easy to underestimate how high value his entire skill set is, especially when you're talking about the power of Weave. Weave um, just gradually got buffed, and Dazzle as a hero, he works in so many situations. You want a mass team fight, you can do that with him. You want to gank with him, you can do that with him. You want to try to sneak early Roshans, you can do that as well. Evil Genius is though going to opt for the Lion pick. So they're going to have two excellent heroes at roaming this map early on. Lion and Crystal Maiden, a walking gank squad by themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And Lion is just a fantastic hero, which we don't really see used all that Nearly much. Nearly as but much as you'd think. Yeah, he's so powerful, honestly. The hex change, that 2.5 second duration hex at level one is just absolutely ludicrous. And we do see Evil Genius just ban out Pyodize Earthshaker. They don't want to deal with any of these ancient yes. pulls or any of that stuff because it's just such a nuisance. And they don't want to see this combination because we saw how lethal and how deadly AUI with Pyodai die with that combination. They Bulba TPs as a Storm Spirit and got absolutely destroyed by those two players. And what we will see, though, is the OD picked up by Evil Genius is likely to be Arteezy. In fact, a little more than likely, as one would imagine. We have seen him absolutely wreck on this hero in the past. Yeah, he has gotten a few, a few subtle nerfs and everything, but nothing yeah. too major. I mean, yes, they made it so the range on the Astral isn't as long, but that hero is still such a dominant lane controller. Luna, the pickup on the side of Cloud9, so that'll be Ee Sama, his farming hero. We actually saw uh, a very similar lineup to this for Cloud9 yesterday, and uh, Eternal Envy diving tier threes. What was it, 15 minutes into the game, something like that? I think so it was even. I think it was way before yeah, that. It might even. have been like <laughs> nine minutes or something ridiculous. But, uh, I, you know, the early draft, it's so hard to tell. I mean, in terms of how they're going to want to run this, I like that they have the Doom, and now they're they going to run the, the Wisp IO. Again. Yes. And Radiant we saw that, you think, maybe. Down. And this is, I think EG needs to ban the Chen right now. Um, I, 
I don't really think so. I mean, they already have the Wisp and the the Wisp and the AA. So I mean, I don't really see how they get really pissed. They, they do need an off laner, right. so unless they decide to do some weird stuff, which yep. I don't know if we'll really see because I don't think they want to be risking anything. Because both these teams are extremely remaining. strong in this right. in this tournament, especially. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if we'll be seeing this exact same aggressive aggressive dual lane that we saw Cloud9 do right. before. It is a possibility though, because Lion is not the strongest support time. early on in the game. All right. of the hex was changed, so he's a lot stronger. But yeah, I don't know if they'll really, they can really do a lot with this. They do. They have a lot of global presence with this Wisp and this AA. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what they decide to do. Yeah, and you know, we saw just how effective they could be with this IO pickup with Luna. Uh, in particular, just the aggressive potential on the side of Cloud9 is massive. And uh, like you said, that Earthshaker ban out there, actually gonna take out the Bounty Hunter, as you said, looking for uh, that off lane ban. And uh, you know, EG, I, you know, when, whenever I think about how they're gonna wanna play this, so much, again, and we talked about this early, is gonna be who wins, who wins out in that mid matchup. In terms of Cloud9 being able to run the IO with the Luna, that can be such an unbelievably potent squad. And you know, traditionally, when you look at teams like Fnatic, when they run the IO, they really like to get those heavy hitters, the Tiny, Five the CK. Remaining. But just being able to have Luna uh, be able to split push, and she is a remarkable split pusher depending on Reserve her skill build. Time. Having that with the IO in her back pocket, ready to bring her into any fight with an Eclipse pre-popped, can be very, very difficult Radiant to cope with. Nature's <laughs> Prophet, the final ban out on the side of Cloud9, and it will be a Darkseer run by Universe for EG. And that's one of Unit. We haven't really been seeing this Darkseer. The yep. popularity of it's massively decreased, but Universe is one of the more spectacular Darkseer players. So. Yep. And... Still waiting on that last pickup from Cloud9, but you know, just coming back around to how powerful that combination was uh, with the Earthshaker. We were talking to Bulba leading up to his match earlier today against Ehug, and he identified that as one of the turning moments of that match, when just the synergy between Ancient Apparition and a Ten huge seconds. turnaround that they Remember. experienced following that fissure with Ancient Apparition. And Cloud9 certainly knows how Five to run uh, an Ancient Apparition in a very aggressive posture. But I mean, taking a look at what we see, obviously Cloud9 time. still yet to reveal all of their cards. How do you feel about Evil Genius's lineup as a whole? They have a decent amount of lockdown. They certainly have answers for everything in Doom. And Darkseer gives them a lot of, of uh, mid-game team fight control. Yeah, they really have everything. The only thing I can say that they're lacking is a bit of push. So they don't really have any solid, you know, hero that can just bring down towers, but their team fight is extremely powerful, especially because of this Darkseer and Doom. But if they can do it properly, I really want to see if they can get this vacuum with the Lion stun off and get, like, a, a huge initiation off of something like this. But, yeah, their lineup overall is quite balanced. I would just say that they do lack Ten a little bit of a push, and, remaining. yeah, that's about it, honestly. Still waiting. Cloud9 taking Five their time. They're down to the last few seconds. We'll find out in just a moment. It's actually going to be a Magnus. Magnus. So a fair amount of, uh, of team fight control on their own side. And, you know, that, that actually gives Magnus, I, you know, it's one of those things in theory you always talk about it, don't always see it all that much, but you can actually do a lot with Magnus and Io. Of course, you have the skewer um, that you can uh, combine with Io for some very interesting results. But on top of that, if you want to hook up and relocate the Magnus into the fights as a, as a method for RP, it can be very, very difficult to deal with and actually gives Mag a little bit of room to breathe in terms of getting up that very important uh, blink deck. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we're going to be seeing this. It could be even be an off-lane mag unless they decide to do some uh, aggressive tri-lane with the AA, Luna, and Wisp, which is definitely a possibility because that is an extremely powerful tri-lane with the Wisp giving the movement speed to the Luna plus the Aura, of course, buffing all three of them. And then on top of that, the Chilling Touch just making all three Ten of them hit immensely powerful. So we'll see what ends up happening. There's a lot of things that really could Five turn seconds out. Remaining. Yeah, they have a lot of lane, uh, deceptive amount of lane versatility, I would even say, as we saw a packed house here in Austin. Welcome in once again, our second best of three. Evil Genius is taking on Cloud9 here at the Monster Prepare Energy Invitational at South by Southwest. Marquee matchup, winner goes to the grand finals. Loser will meet Team Liquid in our lower bracket tomorrow. So the lanes moving out. Looks like Cloud9 choosing to run as five early on. They're going to try to invade the jungle. I wonder how we're going to see these lanes done, because right, from what it looks like right now, it looks like this mag's going to go mid. He's saving a lot of money. He has two tangos shared, and Sing Sing actually bought a stout shield, and he has a lot of regen up on this Ember Spirit. So I'm curious to see what they're going to be doing here. Oh, that we could see a very early clash coming out right here. PPD and Zai, the ones up front. Fear's right there with him. Fear, of course, on that Doom. They're going to they spot a PPD. He's going to be forced to spend the tango to eat his way through. Sing Sing right behind him. Can he catch up? He does. Here. Yep. A lot of damage. Chilling touch pop. Beautiful impale, though. Disjoints everything. And Sing Sing actually comes out on the bad end of that, taking quite a bit of damage by the time all was said and done. So very well managed there and a well shot um, uh, Earth Spike coming out from Zai. Yeah. Well played. They dove a little bit too far. They got hit by the tower there. So they knew they had to back out right away. But they did get down this ward, which blocks the big camp. So it is going to obstruct a little bit of the Crystal Maiden's farm to be staying clear close to the uh, bottom lane. So I think we are going to be seeing C9 go aggressive. 
Creeps just about ready to spawn as the game gets underway. We'll run through our lineup, see who's handling who. On the side the of Evil Genius, it's Wild PPD playing on our Crystal Maiden, making his way up to the top lane for now. Doom going to be handled by Old Man Dota, Fear himself. Universe, of course, on the Darkseer, heading into that off lane as well with Zai playing on our Lion, who already bailed uh, his buddy's out of a little bit of trouble there. And Arteezy going to be going mid on the OD. Across the river, we've got Io played by Pi Lai Dai, going to be Luna. Handling, uh, handled by Eternal Envy. Sing Sing once again back on the Ember Spirit as anticipated with the Ancient Apparition played by AUI. And then Magnus going to be played by the stand-in, the ringer, Demon. I feel like Demon's going to have a really hard time in this mid lane though. Magnus does do pretty decently because he does keep his damage and everything. And if he decides to go for an early level and empower, he can last it pretty decently. But OD overall does have a very dominant lane there. And we do see some dual lanes coming out, and Crystal Maiden knows that they did get that ward down on his big camp, so he's just jungling in the enemy dire side. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah, going, <laughs> going to work on the big satyr, as we can see, and Universe doing quite well for himself, stacking up those ion shells, getting him on the creeps, so on and so forth. At least for now, he's going to be able to stay quite far forward, soak as much experience, and probably get himself a bit of gold as well. And uh, here in mid, of course, the marquee matchup. Demon on this Magnus. We'll see what start he gets off to. Does have Io again, as mentioned, to bail him out in terms of mobility and getting into fights to land the big RPs. He's certainly going to want, even if he does struggle here in mid. And uh, Arteezy, of course, on the OD. Yeah, and bottom lane, though, this pressure by this Wisp and this Luna is ridiculous. They are just constantly Dyer's beating on fear. Has and been killed. Wow, what? PPD. Extremely sneaky there. I didn't get to catch that one, but he was because he, he was jungling aggressively. He just got to walk in and kill that courier. Yep, got to the spot right as it happened. And it actually had Demon's empty bottle on it, so oh, he was walking that's... extremely slow. And that's a huge play by PPD there. Yep, and just good pre-planning, knowing that obviously you're going to have bottle crowing coming out, and that knowing that the mag was going to need it very desperately early on, pre-three minutes, can't upgrade the courier. Just good game planning, good execution from EG. Big win there. Yeah, we see the early Bassy picked up in this bottom lane by the Luna, which is expected. Demon's at least going to contest for this rune. Arteezy might be able to get it. Oh, oh, he gets the banish up, and he doesn't get it, though, in time. Arteezy taking a little bit of a pat on the butt on his way back to lane as a demon. Winning the battle for the runes that time around. Up atop, we can see a lot of aggression, though. Universe and Sing Sing trading blows. Universe has to surge his way into the side shop. One more auto attack, and he'll drop. Buys a TP, will be able to make it back. He almost managed to bring down Sing Sing there, but everyone makes it away. Not unscathed, but certainly still breathing. A lot of action all over the place in this game very early on. Not a kill yet going out, but they are just really trying to put some early aggression all over the place. Yep, and as you said, this dual lane coming out from Cloud9 doing a great job of keeping the pressure up down here at bottom. Fear sitting at just 4 CS right now. And it's not the biggest deal in the world. I mean, Doom's going to be of use once he gets level 6 regardless, but does really want some items to feel very, very effective, especially when he's given this much priority in terms of farm. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, pretty passive game, though. I mean, they're, they're, well, not passive. There has been a lot of action going on. And of course, the courier being killed is just absolutely devastating to C9, because now all of EG has a little bit of bonus gold. And we see Demon skewering up on RTZ, playing very manly. Very much so like a demon play, though. So. Uh, yeah. That's what demon's going to do. He's got another minute till he gets his bottle back up, but we can see Fear stacking up that camp there. Well, actually, wasn't stacking it up. Just managed to pull them out. But, he actually uh, uh, ate that ice armor, which is going to be so big for him because he's been yep. eating harassment, and that plus eight armor actually makes Doom so, so tanky. They're going to go for this. Engaging. Yep, here comes PPD coming from the north. They're going to manage to hook up First with Eternal Envy. Blood. First blood ends up going to Luna. They might get Pylai die in return, and they do, so it's a one-for-one one exchange. PPD not out of trouble yet, First and blood, nope, not going to chase it. Envy. So close. Three HP up on him. Yep. Thought one last auto attack would do the trick. Unfortunately, it wouldn't, and that right there is our first blood going the way of Cloud9. But I think so far this early game is really setting the tone for what we can expect from the entire series. Knew it was going to be very competitive, very close, and both teams are just firing from the hip every chance they get. Yeah, absolutely. And Arteezy's doing pretty dominant mid lane, but you know what? Max finding a little bit of farm. He did lose his bottle, so it's really devastating, and he's doing Radiant's okay, honestly. Middle tower it's is under attack. pretty well played by Demon so far. Universe is very, very close to level 5 already. We can check the uh, farm rates and see it's Arteezy and Sing Sing near the top dis despite not being mid against each other. 25 for Sing Sing, 24 for Arteezy. Eternal Envy is certainly winning out in this bottom lane, sitting at 24 as well, while poor Fear is sitting at less than a third than that, just seven for him. Yeah, but he does. Ha Devour does make up for this, and he does get some phase boots up, and we do see Crystal Maiden rotating toward this top lane, so maybe we'll see some action out of the Dark Seer and the Crystal Maiden going for an early kill. PPD being very active early on has really been a difference maker, came in. 
And even though EG didn't get first blood, they got a return kill and did manage to survive that engagement at bottom, managed to get that, that pick off on the courier as well. Finally, the courier back up as they're able to get the bottle back on Demon, unable to find anything in this rotation at the top, though. Yeah, and let's see, PPD is running back toward into their jungle. He's going to try to find some farm there where he can, and maybe just start for a rotation middle while Arteezy hits level 6. And Arteezy is 6 now, and uh-oh, Mag Side. in trouble. There to follow it up with the Hex. Has enough for an Earth Spike. Times it perfectly. OD drops the ult, and a couple more auto attacks to do the trick. That's going to be another kill on the board for Evil Geniuses, and PPD wasn't even needed, but he was in position. If Mag had tried to get away there or had a chance, it would have been there to catch him between the Tier 1 and the Tier 2. And right now, EG is just moving and carving this map up very effectively. Absolutely, but... As well as that happening, the Ember Spirit's getting a lot of farm up top. He's doing very well for himself, even though getting pressured by these double ion shells. And Luna is getting an incredible amount of farm. They're going to go on Universe at top. Down. Universe in some down. trouble. Oh, he got caught by the cold feet. Can they? Yes! One last auto attack from AUI. Ties the score back at two. And uh, Saw, Sing Sing kind of catch him by surprise there. A little bit of yep. wonky retreat. But did, uh, they did manage to track him down. Six minutes in, we got four kills on the board, and this game only going to get more aggressive as time goes on. Absolutely, and Arteezy finds himself a DD rune top after banishing the Magnus. And something else, like this Ember Spirit, the, the three-second lockdown on that third uh, level of Searing Change is just so powerful, and we see how much damage it really does. I lie, die. I die, just, you know, beating down <laughs> Illusion a little bit right now. Yeah, just hanging out. It's fine. Up at top, though, we got more action. PPD right there trying to get on AUI. Nice chains from Sing Sing, and they might get Universe as well. Pylai Dai is right there with them. The orb's going to do some damage. Search is going to run out, and Sing Sing right there. Doesn't have enough mana for chains, and he does manage to make it away uh, because of that. Actually, he did find his level 6, so might have been able to jump on him, but just too low in the mana pool department. 2-3, to three. Cloud9 now has the advantage there. We're coming up on 7 minutes into this game. We'll take our first look at the gold graph. We can see a very close affair, EG holding just a razor's edge of a lead right and now That's at basically because of the courier kill. Yep. I mean, Cloud9's playing absolutely great right now. The supports are getting really overleveled on Cloud9, while EG supports are taking a little bit of, a little bit of hits, but now Doom made his way into the jungle, and Zai's getting some solo experience bottom, which he much needs, and they're going to try to get this early level 6 up on this line. And, and, you know, coming up towards 10 minutes now, I really do expect to see this game get more and more aggressive as we go. I mean, that's just how, that's kind of Cloud9's calling card. They're not, I mean, they're a team who, when they're behind, will fall back and farm and just try to play defensive if they have to. But uh, both of these teams really like to set the tone. And PPD's movement so far has been effective for the most part in terms of pure movement. But in terms of C9's reactions, they've really been on the ball and it's making all the difference and then making up that uh, loss of, making up for that loss of the courier. Really keeping them in a nice... getting gone on maybe top. Uh, but, but he gets a surge off, and yeah, he's just going to get away. Sing Sing's just giving him a lot of harassment, not letting him have a free lane whatsoever. And Arteezy is, of course, going for his Midas, and he's got it coming out on the courier right now. Dyer's top tower Sub 8 minute Midas, attack. not too terribly shabby. No, definitely not, especially not for the items that he did go. He opted for the bottle as well on the OD because yeah. he doesn't really, he doesn't have faith in his mana procs, of course. Looks like, yep, Universe. Sensing something might be up, surging his way back to safety. Level 5 on Ancient Apparition now has four points, or excuse me, three points in the Chilling Touch, and two, hold on, there's a Doom onto EE at bottom, and caught with the Earth Spike, and that's a big kill for EG, and one fear desperately needed to be a part of playing catch up. Now they might even be able to get Pylai Die. Yep, there's the Hex. Arteezy right there with him, and ults just to secure the kill. So just like that, the game turned around a bit by EG. They hold a slim margin, four to three. And we've already got seven kills on the board. Usually they start to pile up around 10 to 15 minutes. But uh, yeah, this game, certainly a pleasure to watch if you're a spectator. Yeah, absolutely. And I was a little bit confused by why Envy was so far up that he get caught out by that Doom. Bottom tower I, I was taking a look attack. at it on the, on the mini-map, but then he actually did get hit by all of it. So great play by Fear, though, finding the, the action there. Speaking of Envy, doing quite well for himself in the CS department, as is Arteezy, 52 apiece, give or take 53 apiece. Sing Sing's at 40. Fear has caught up fairly well, and as you said, Devour certainly helps in that department as well. He's sitting at 29, tied up with the universe. So efficiency-wise on their two cores that they uh, want to have the, for the farmed the most, Cloud9 in quite good position. We do see EG beginning to hook up a bit here in mid, and we'll see if they want to make something happen. Yeah, they see the Ember Spirits. They definitely notice that this Ember Spirit's not in this top lane. They're giving Aoi the free farm, so they, they're assuming that this Ember Spirit's looking for a gank. So they're just going to be playing very, very safe and just going back into their jungle and maybe just run toward top. And yeah, Zai smoked up with PPD, and the line is level 6 now, so they can easily get a kill on anybody if they see them. And right now, AUI just hanging out in the side shop. Trying to soak experience. He's going to come out and show his face. If they catch him at all, PPD and Zai playing so attack. patient. Looks like AUI suspects something's up. And, yeah, PPD 
revealed in front of the creep, so dodging out that gank attempt. They still might uh, take a chance at diving him. Down at bottom, we see Sing Sing's hooked up with Eternal Envy and Pile I Die. They may push this tower. Yeah, definitely. And Demon's actually finding a lot of farm for himself. He's got his Arcane Boots, he's got his level 8 up on this mag, so he actually Dyer's pulled out very well for losing the, after attack. losing the Courier and everything in mid lane, Radiant's and being versus an OD, of course. But attack. they do spot Demon because of that ward on the side. Very nice ward by EG there. And yeah, C9's Radiant putting some pressure on bottom lane while they know that those supports from EG were trying to gank up top. Yeah, looks like they're going to reset for a moment. I thought they might just flat out go for the dive on AUI, and he's in a pretty decent position to be told, but bottom tower um, is under EG attack. even has a pretty solid ward down to make sure that they're not going to be walking into a trap and instead. EG smokes up again right away on the two supports after yeah. missing that, that attempt on that kill. And yeah, C9 is just going to continue pressure in this bottom lane. Doom is running down there, and he looks like he's going to be Radiant's going for that Vanguard build on the Doom. He has to bring a help in a stout shield and his face boots up. And let's see if they decide to fight down here. Hey, ulti. Heading its way down, that's a big old Sphere only. Nope, didn't even catch anyone. Fear does move out. And the TP is going to be there as they're going to be in a position to deny this tower. And we actually see Zai caught with the Searing Chain, taking a lot of damage doom. from it. There's going to be a Doom on the pile I died. And the Radiant's tower denied tower by Doom in the meantime. EG not overcommitting to this, not wanting to rush attack. in. Eternal Envy level 8. And uh, at this stage of the game, Eclipse, a very scary uh, spell to try to engage into. Yeah, and we see... <laughs> The Master and the Apprentice, both about even on the CS board right now. Yep. Although RTZ has a kill under his belt and no deaths, Luna does have the first blood, but he does have a death. So let's take a look at this gold graph and see how this is playing out. And Ichi's actually benefiting from this in the gold, but the experience is completely even at this point. At the top, AUI continuing to just soak levels. He's up to level 7, has up a pair of tranks, and now has Universe right in his face. Speaking of Universe, he will be getting a mechanism. He's made very good progress towards it. Has the buckler and the headdress up, only about another 700 gold required until he has that up in full. And PPD, he's level 5, so he's getting close to having Freezing Field at his disposal as well. Yeah, and the pace of the game really slowed down after the early game. And Oh, maybe as I say that, Universe might be get caught out right now. Yep. TP's out immediately. Well, he oh! Hit. oh! That's going to be pretty close. He might actually, No, he got it. He, he got might pegged by it. Yep. It might. It's going to be close. Another tick or two. No, he's under attack. By the skin of his teeth. In the meantime, at bottom, Eternal Envy's chasing around Zai. Zai, very squishy right now. Misses with the Earth Spike. Gets off the Hex, though. Buys himself some time. Has help on the way, however. One auto attack. All they needed to clean him up. Fear now going to be spotted out. Oh, Eternal he's Envy. in trouble. Yep. Eclipse. There it is. Not After quite the, yet. Nope. Thought he was going to. No, they, I think they, they probably clicked on him and saw that he has 1300 HP. And we actually missed a kill in mid lane. OD gets killed. That was an RP spent. So very well played by Demon there and Amber Spirit. And Demon is getting very close to his Blink Dagger. Excellent timing by Demon. He's playing fantastic on this map. Absolutely. And that, you know, attack. it's such a Demon hero too. Loves to make plays. Hi, uh, here we go. Sing Sing's actually going to get off chains on PPD. There's the Frostbite to follow it up. AA ulti's going to be on the way, connects, and Universe has to get out of there. In the meantime, Sing Sing's still trying to hang around. We're going to see Doom onto Eternal Envy. Fear feeling very tanky, but not tanky enough to take on three. Retreating back to the safety of Zai. Spins an Earth Spike to try and make a little space, and that's going to be the end of that engagement. So he spent the Doom there. That's going to be on cooldown, and C9's going to know that. 85 seconds now until it's back up. They might try to take this opportunity to get a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, and AY is just farming away in this top lane. He's got 1,600 gold under his belt. He's level Radiant's 8 on this AA. Is so under attack. he's just, he's fine with this. Maybe we'll even see him pull out a Midas. And they're doing a great job of taking away EG's jungle down at bottom. Got to be very careful for as he scurries back under his own tower, knowing, and just look at the warding out right now from C9. Yeah. They have this jungle completely locked down. Yeah, for sure. Mag picks up his blink right now, and Wisp also it has his level 6 now. He's very close to level 7 as well. Middle Eternal Envy is doing attack. very well for himself. He has Treads, Drum, he's level 9, and he has another 1,400 gold up on him. So we'll be, this is kind of looking like C9's game a bit right now. I mean, RTZ has a good amount of farm as well, of course. They have good levels spread out, but the Doom has Dyer's only been used as a defensive position, attack. and they haven't even gained a kill out of it. Yep. He really hasn't felt too impactful. Arteezy, though, for the most part, outside of uh, getting a kill or two here in mid lane, hasn't really been super active either. Um, we'll start to see him move around more for sure. Here we go. We're going to have a collapse onto him. Fear up front, taking a lot of the damage. Demon's right there. There's going to be AA ult. It's going to connect all three. PPD could be in trouble. Sing Sing manages to get off the slide of fist. And Arteezy ticking down. And we're going to see him jump in. Gets a two man searing chains and cleans up PPD in the process. Behind that, chased out. behind that Zai being pursued up into his own jungle. Pile I Die not giving up on it quite yet. And oh, yep, man. there it is. Demon gets another kill. Yeah, and C9 playing spectacular. They didn't even have to blow, the, they didn't even have RP up at that time. And they still benefited a lot Dyer's from all those kills. Yep. Under attack. Just not feeling much coming out Radiant's of Doom. I mean, Mechanism will be a big item. Universe will have that up here shortly. 
But, uh, you know, you're also up against an ancient apparition. That takes that out of the, uh, out of the equation a little bit anyway. Yeah, and AUI has 2,200 gold up on him. Fear is doing pretty well for himself as well, though. He has 2,000 gold. I wonder if we'll see him opt for an early Blink Dagger since he does have this score Stomp on this Doom right now. And Universe actually picks up his mech right now, so not the best timing, but pretty decent after the what would happen top. He did get first blood, or he did get killed up there pretty early, so. Starting to see EG run as a group quite a bit more. I agree with you, though. Cloud9 with a 8 to 4 overall attack. kill lead, the gold graph in favor of EG right now. The experience, though, heavily in favor of Cloud9. And now Sing Sing's line of progression continuing as he's Radiance picked up a set of drums to go attack. with those phase boots. 16 minutes in, he's beginning to feel more and more threatening, but EG going to head towards top as a group. Universe leading with the chin, while the rest of the team is smoked up behind him. Radiance middle yep. tower is under Big attack. smoke. Four men smoke. They're just waiting to see if anybody goes on there. I think C9 sees something coming, because Aoi is in the most defensive position I've ever seen right now. <laughs> yeah, tucked up near the edge of the map. Hiding in the woods. And yeah, we even see it drawn that he's going to be getting help. Demon's going to make his way up as quickly as he can. Has the uh, Blink Dagger and Arc Boots up, as we mentioned. So certainly he's in the perfect position to make a play here. And they're going to TP one in. They might try to make something happen here. Fear going to jump right on top of him. Fear has that Blink Dagger up. Doom's Eternal Envy. Demon's right there behind him. And now behind that, we're actually going to see Pylai die coming in along with Sing Sing. They're going to catch Dive. No, they dropped the hammer from Arteezy. Sing Sing chopped down by Fear. Pylai die in trouble as well. Zyg is going to be the only hero caught with that RP. That's a two for one so far. But the Eclipse returned from Eternal Envy as he was helped out by his team. They managed to get Arteezy as well. And... They're not done as PPD being pursued out. Cloud9 catches him out in the woods. That's going to be a four for two exchange. And Cloud9, even though the tier one top does end up dropping, takes another big win. Yeah, absolutely. And the Doom just keeps, it's not really being used that effectively. I mean, yep. we saw him Doom, and then Luna just backed away, waited for it to start ticking off, and then just ran right back into the team fight and was like, you know what? I'm confident. They don't really have anything they can catch me with. And yeah, I'm not sure if this Darkseer is really working out too well for them. He's not having the best game so far. He does have his mech and everything picked up, but. I just, I feel like they're lacking something that's really just the initiating force. We saw Fear pick up the Blink Dagger and go for the War Stomp right away, but it ended up not really working out because he didn't get it off and he just ended up wasting his Doom again. So that's actually three wasted Dooms, unfortunately, for EG. What I think this comes down to is Zai is in a desperate need of a mobility item. Blink yeah. Dagger, Force Staff, they have to have him the, uh, being the one who starts these fights. Like you said, they jump in, they Doom Eternal Envy, he retreats and they go, oh, there's a whole team behind him, we need to get out of there. But there's a Tier 1 up and they're able to, to teleport in and just retake that tower. And on top of that, you have Io. Io, of course, able to bring in Sing Sing, made all the difference there. And uh, yeah, I think Cloud9 is just playing super, super good Dota at the moment. Yeah. And EG's going to have to reset and stabilize a little bit. Yeah, they're, C9's really pulling ahead a lot of this. And look at this AA. I, I don't want to keep going back to him. I love this hero, of course, but like, he almost has an Ag Scepter up on a support AA at 18 minutes. And on top of that, he's higher level than his Ember Spirit carry that he was leaning with. He's almost level 12 up on this AA, so that's going to be so devastating in some of these team fights. I think that EG is really going to have to just slow down the pace of this game, try to pick up some farmer on their heroes, and not try to fight these guys in a team fight because it's going to be really dangerous. They have the Mag with the Blink. They have the Wisp Relocate. They have the Luna who's going this very, very greedy build. He has this Dominator. And yeah, c 9s just trying to bring the action to them. They have the offensive wards down, and they're going right into the enemy jungle. And they might end up getting a catch here. Fear on the wrong side of the trees. Yep, drum charge is popped, and Fear's dead. They're going to catch him flat out. And he's going to be moving pretty quickly, but the damage from range more than enough to clean him up. And, you know, I was actually going to point that out. What's even more impressive here, and, of course, the double damage rune on Eternal Envy didn't hurt in that case either. But what's even more impressive is they've been winning these fights with, as you said, a fairly greedy build coming out of EE. BKB was not a big priority for him. Instead, going drums, Helm of the Dominator. There's, and usually Lunas can feel very uh, susceptible at that point. Instead, he's been a huge difference maker. And even though he's been focused in large part by fear with that uh, with Oh, that man, Arteezy is not in a good spot right now. He's in this enemy jungle. Yep, and PPD's coming to try to help out. Can they track him down? Mech was there from Universe, Dyer's and that might be enough. Nope, AA oh, ultimate. A doesn't really matter. Needed, though. Yep, Luna able to lock him down with the Lucent V. But this is what they're doing with a greedy build. Just imagine whenever a BKB comes out, and uh, it's even less of, and it's uh, they're even more effective in terms of fighting from the one position. Yeah, but the movement right now from C9 is just pristine. I really, I don't know another word that I can say for this because they're just, they're everywhere. They're really just constantly finding kills all over the place. And EG is just g getting picked apart all over the place. And yeah, the Ag Scepter gets picked up by the AA now. So that's a ton of damage. If he hits one of these supports with it, it could potentially kill them alone. 
And for the moment, both teams resetting PPD. Actually going to spin a Frostbite onto Eternal Envy and immediately pops the Eclipse and will get the kill on PPD. Oh, Wisp is coming in too, so yep. I don't even think the Luna's going to take any heat from this. Uh, yep, they're going to turn around. AA ulti is there, does connect and catches both of them. And they're oh, going to try to trouble. damage. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I thought the Luna was going to try to go for a Lucent Beam. I think that Lucent Beam might have actually ticked Fear over oh, and killed Demon. him. Oh, Demon. Oh, I thought they were going to cut through the Secret Shop. Demon trying to anticipate a retreat path for Fear. But, uh, yeah, he should end up surviving here. And finally, it ticks its way down. It's a good thing he went straight south instead of trying to duck uh, to the right, though. But in the attack. meantime, they're just continuing to... They just have an unbelievable stranglehold on this map. EG feels like a team that's kind of suffocated. Every time they try to push out and get something done, that happens. And it's crazy. If you look at the gold graph, it doesn't really show that so much. It's only about yep. 1,500 gold lead right now for C9, just because, probably because of this Devourer and the Midas up on OD. But if you look at this experience graph, oh, yeah. it's absolutely drastic. It's gone its way to almost 12,000, which is actually a big, big, big difference. Oh, yeah, especially when you look at the heroes on Cloud9. The fact that um, these heroes do benefit a lot from having um, having more skill points. I mean, we're going to have a level 3 Eclipse up on Eternal Envy very, very soon. He's halfway to level 15 as we speak. Magnus is already level 13, so level 2 RP is already up on him. And across the board, they're just benefiting immensely um, from not only having more powerful abilities, but having better stat gain. Yeah, absolutely. And the supports on, supports on EG are just super crippled, and Pilai dies getting semi-close to his mech. Apparition, I said, was, getting, was already super farmed, of course. He's had high levels and everything. And I wonder if we're going to see our, uh, Envy go for a more greedy build or just pop out that BKB and just try to go for some towers. But they do have the Doom to counter the BKB anyway, so I'm not sure if we'll see that. I think more, more so of an Envy build will be pop getting the Manta right now. And they're yep. going for a Wisp Relocate bottom. And, and down yeah. a bottom, PPD. Dead to rights, and that's going to be another kill going a lot to Luna. Of, a lot of this is happening because of the excellent warding by C9. They keep catching these people in the jungle, and they're just really just keeping the pressure constantly coming out. Well, and I'll tell you what they're doing an excellent job of, too. They're taking these, these risky jabs and getting the kills, and then they're extricating themselves from these situations, giving nothing back. It's not just that they're trading. They're basically just flat out winning out and giving so little to EG in response. That uh, accounts in a large part for uh, the experience. I mean, it's 16 to 6, and that kill lead is beginning to really pile up. Yeah, we, we do see Universe go for this Blink Dagger, so the team fights could still go definitely Radiant's in the favor of uh, EG if they get attack. a big vacuum into an Earth Spike into a War Stomp or something like this. But other than that, it's going to be pretty hard for EG to team fight versus this Cloud9 team because of the amount of harm and the amount of levels that they're really getting all over the place. It's, it's insane. And Luna, he's definitely going for a greedy build. I'm trying to look at the career. Yeah, he's got a Yash on it, so he is going for the Manta Rush. And, you know, it, it makes sense. Why would, uh, to this point, you haven't really needed a BKB. You haven't felt like uh, you have anything to fear except maybe being uh, doomed by the doom. And even when that's happened, it's, he's managed to just kite it out, stay alive, and then re-engage. So and, you know, obviously that goes through BKB. So, uh, yeah, I don't see a reason for him to even worry about it if it hasn't been a problem to this point. And they're just continuing to build on that lead. And you can see EG playing so defensive. They're spending so much time right on top of each other. They will go ahead and smoke and try to catch C9. Problem is, they're moving out with three and two trailing behind. They're actually going to move right into the Roche pit. And this should tell you, I mean, at 23 minutes in, they know things are getting a little bit desperate. They need to make a difference right now. They might be able to get this sneak off, though, because it looks like C9 just smoked up, Radiant's but maybe they'll walk back into the pit and just, go, just sneak in and Oh, peek. AUI. Oh, yep, they know. AUI pops his nose in, throws up the AOT immediately. Fear in some trouble. There's going to be the shockwave, and he's dead. So they take away their one chance. They even bring in the IO and Eternal Envy. Oh, and RP actually spent to no avail. And this game might honestly be reaching the point of insurmountable, 18 to 6. And like you said, the gold graph hasn't really reflected just how much, how dominating uh, C9 has been to this point. But the fact is, I mean, 15,000 experience. Now it's going to be an Aegis going to Eternal Envy. And I don't know. Sing Sing with a broadsword up, or Claymore, excuse me. Most likely on his way to uh, to a battle fury, and this is just getting really, really out of hand really quickly. Especially when you look at the fact that the early game should have been EGs. They had such a good team for that, and they just haven't been able to execute and, and make any tangible games. Yeah, but just like yesterday, I mean, C9 doing something really smart, and they did decided just you know what, we're just going to do this aggressive dual lane with this with Luna. We have so much movement speed on the Luna, we do a lot of right clicks, and we're just going to put Fear down so hard. And you're really feeling it. Even though Fear has a good amount of farm under his belt, he's got his Blink, he's got his Vanguard, he's going for this BKB pretty soon. But we just haven't really felt the impact of the Doom that we do feel sometimes. He's, he's had to use his Doom so defensively just because of the way that the game just happened. And it's really surprising that this is all happening after they got that Courier kill in the beginning too. 
Well, you can see he's actually on the level of farm of the Magnus, and Mag in mid Radiant's should have struggled a lot more than he did. Attack. Demon has played very, very well. And uh, yeah, both sitting right around uh, that 8,000, 8,500 overall net worth range. Eternal Envy sitting at 12,000 overall net worth, topping fallen. the charts right now. And yeah, the rich are just continuing to get richer at this point, and we can even see. Oh, Zai might actually, Zai's gonna die just from that AA ulti. Yeah, he's gonna tick down for sure. And he was trying to farm up his blink. They were trying to give him the space to get his blink dagger in time, but yeah, he's gonna tick down right now. Mega there you go. Kill. And they're now pushing tower. that top tower. Attack. C9 Radiant's just executing in all phases of the game. And, you know, it's worth mentioning, there's still a Tier 1 standing for them. At 25 minutes in, Veer trying to get something done, but they're going to end up losing a Tier 2 if they're not very, very careful. They're trying to pursue Universe out. They're just rotating down. Hang on, there's going to be a relocate onto Fear. Demon's right there. Will Skewer will catch him. And the RP spent just to lock him down. That'll be that. Universe gets off a nice vacuum wall. AA ulti, though, going to connect as he retreats through it, and they're going to pursue him up. Sing Sing right behind him, catches him with the Searing Chains. Another kill for C9, 21 to 6, and things just keep getting worse and worse for Evil Geniuses. Yeah, we haven't really gotten to see RTZ have that much of an impact in this yeah. game. He is high level, his farm is pretty decent. He's got four staff Midas and a BKB up at 26 minutes, which is really good. His net worth is 11k, but the mobility and the movement just by C9 is just so spectacular. They're everywhere. It's, it's actually just amazing to watch right now. And, and as it stands, I mean, there are Tier 2 still standing. It feels like they can really just set up shop here in the jungle and take that Tier 2 almost at will. Their team fight potential is just absolutely through the roof. And you take a look again back at the levels. Poor PPD is level 8. Io is level 11 at this stage. Yeah, it's... AA is just going to keep split pushing these lanes with his ulti, trying to get just... If he hits somebody with it, sure, why not? But he can push out the lanes. If he hits, someone, if he hits one of these supports with the ultimate, it's... It's almost a guaranteed kill, and we see Luna tethered up with the Io. Maybe we'll see some action going on, on top pretty soon. Arteezy in no shape to fight as he was hit with that ice blast down to about a third health. And yeah, they just got to retreat. And they're doing such a good job of smothering them out. In the meantime, Demon and AUI taking some farm from the Ancients as best they can. Sing Sing just farming the jungle up. They're just doing such a good job. Yeah, and C9 really suffocating them. Look, they even, yeah. they even decided, you know what? We're in such a good position. We're warding this jungle. We're not going to let you guys find any farm. We're right. not going to give you guys any chances to Radiant's come back in this game. We want to end this attack. game fast and strong. And Demon is like, Demon doesn't even care. He's not going for a BKP or anything. He's just rushing this refresher on him. So yep. that double RP is going to be extremely scary. And he's already Radiant's level 16. In the meantime, Envy manages Radiant's to find another tower. tower Only two tier two still standing now for Evil Geniuses. And to tell you the truth, I think we passed the point of suffocation a while ago. We're now into the territory of strangulation. They are absolutely yeah. exerting their will on every corner of this map. And EG really just seems kind of ragged as they try to respond to this across the map. They, they're they getting into the right positions at some point, but they're giving up so much just to try and get so little. I mean, how long has it been since EG even tallied to kill? Yeah, it's been quite a while, actually. We can take a look at that and just see. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been since about the 15 or 16 minute mark since they've gotten a kill on the IO. And that's not even that big of an importance yeah. of a kill. So we do see the Battle Fury picked up by Sing Sing and Eternal Envy picks up a straight Satanic. So I don't see how they're going to kill the, they can kill this Luna. Unless something in insane happens, I think this game is coming to a yeah. pretty bitter end. <laughs> and PPD, pretty sure, old oh boy. Uh, he's going to have to, nope, I'm pretty sure he's going to end up dropping to that. See if he buys the cloak. Oh, he doesn't even have the money for the cloak, but yeah. I don't think yeah, he might not take him out. Radiance it's gonna be close. Radiance middle tower. Yeah, C9 just falling. decided. You know what? We can break high ground. Oh, and they're whisporting on bottom. So now Universe and Fear are in deep, yep. deep trouble. RP dropped by Demon Radiance Fear. Six. Gonna be focused down. They use the Eclipse just in case, and now they can go right back. They can go right back and push, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Right back to mid. TP reaction doesn't matter now. Yep, there's gonna be a hex. However, RTC. Radiance comes back out from the actual in prison and just surrounded by unfriendly faces. Even Pile I die a little too strong to be picked off flat out with the ultimate. However, nice freezing build from PPD. There's the finger of death, enough to finally get another kill on the board for them. They got IO at the end of that fight as well. But Cloud9 still trading as well as they could want. The most farmed hero on the board right now for EG is Arteezy, and let's be real, man. Arteezy has been almost completely absent from this game. Yep, they're just going to call it. Of course, yeah. This game just really did not go in favor of EG. The gold graph didn't really agree with him at first, but then you see how it took a yep. huge dive down when, they, when EG just really couldn't find anything, and C9 just 
great movement, such great play by all over the place. They just left the AA top for the majority of this game, and he just farmed. While Ember Spirit just was like, you know what, I'm just going to run around with my, my Luna and my Wisp, find kills all over the place. And Demon, of course, played spectacular. Oh, That's he did. That's an extremely difficult lane to do versus Mag and OD, and he lost the Courier yep. and his bottle on it, so... You know, coming into this match, we were talking about how competitive it was going to be. And we said a lot would come down to the draft. The laning phase is really where things just came together. I mean, they just got so much out of it. Fear, pretty much a non-factor. You see Arteezy again, he did very, very well for himself for the most part. But finishing 3-4-3 and three, in terms of his actual impact across the map, we didn't see it, even though his item gain was decent enough. I mean, he wound up with a four staff of BKB. This is a relatively short game in 30 minutes. Um, but yeah, it's just the overall synergy in, in Cloud9 and 10 and 1, that coming out of Eternal Envy, who just benefited so much from that dual lane running into the off lane. It, I, I can't think of a time except maybe just as PPD uh, picked off that courier. Even though his, mo his uh, movement was good, they still were never able to translate that into anything big. Yeah, and it's not even that EG played bad by any means. Yeah. C9 just played absolutely spectacular. And EG, yeah, the, in the movement in the beginning of the game, OD hit six, Lion ports middle instantly, yep. and he gets a kill up on the mid solo. So it right. was big. They did a lot of big plays. They got the courier, they got a a lot of wards down and everything, but it just really wasn't enough, and C9 just played so well and took control of this game. Game one's in the books. EG taking on Cloud9 with a spot in the Grand Finals on the line. The winners, of course, will advance to those Grand Finals to be held tomorrow. The losers will be meeting Team Liquid in the lower bracket. EG needs to get it together if they want to force a Game 3. Cloud9, though, they're thinking shutout. We'll find out which team's up to the task coming up next. You're tuned in to the Monster Energy Invitational Live from South by Southwest. We'll be right back.